What happens if the static port is clogged, but not my pitot tube? We'll find out in this video. I'm sorry, Nation, before we start, who is, are we on 11? 11 of 11, let me know in the comments below. You're nearly halfway there. It is absolutely outstanding. Hey, today we're diving into pedostatic system failures. We're gonna answer questions like, what happens if the pedo tube becomes clogged? What about the pedo tube, ram air hole, and the drain hole, but not the static port? What about just the drain hole and the static? All these different combinations, we're gonna go over that here today, and then what do you do if you encounter them? And some of you are saying, Jason, I fly a G1000, these don't apply to me. Well. They still apply to you. Let me show you how, and we're gonna do it through an amazing uh, way to add some fun simulation and gamification. You know M0A, by the way, isn't just an amazing YouTube or Facebook channel. I know you watch all our videos here. You know we have literally the best online ground school, and it's there to serve you all as well. Literally from zero to hero all the way through, and inside the ground school, you see cool things like this. So we're looking now at our pedo static system simulator. Uh, let's just do it, let's make it, and again, this is available ground school members underneath the resources tab where you'd go to resources here, uh, and then you'd go to training aids, pedo static system simulator. So you have access to that there. We're gonna go uh, at 80 knots up to 8,000 feet-ish, roughly, all right? So we're working our way on through. You can see our airspeed is building, our vertical speed, we're climbing at 1,500 feet per minute, altimeter's working, everything is looking good. You can see how our airspeed indicator works. We take ram air into our pitot tube. It comes on up and gives us a reading. We also have a drain hole in the back here, so rain can make its way on through and head right on out. We also have our static port here, which works to sense the differences in pressure through our aneroid wafers and our diaphragm and our vertical speed indicator to give us our appropriate readings. So to start us off, let's just say we come over here, we click to clog the pitot tube, the ram air hole. So the static port is open, the drain hole is open, I've blocked the ram air hole, my airspeed predictably goes to zero. I can pull the alternate static source all I want, it's not gonna help if my RAM air hole is clogged here, all right? You might be thinking, what does this look like on a G1000? I'd love to show you. We'll come down here to our G1000 view. You would think you'd get a big red X or something like that. You actually don't in the G1000. It'll simply just go to zero. So do be mindful of that. Um, glass panel pilots, I can't even just be as broad as G1000, glass panel pilots in general. So we're continuing on up. Now, let's do another interesting test. Let's say this is iced up and my pitot heat's not working for some reason. We block the ram air hole. We also block the drain hole. Wait a second. Look at our airspeed indicator. What on earth is happening? I blocked the ram air hole. I blocked the drain hole. Why is my airspeed indicator moving? This doesn't make any sense. So let's, let's see a G1000. It's actually giving me a reading that could be kind of correct. I mean, it keeps climbing, so eventually it's not gonna be correct here. What's actually happening? Well, remember, this is a pressure-sensitive instrument. We have locked pressure, and by clogging the ram air hole and clogging the drain hole, we have locked pressure in to our air, in our pedo side of our pedo static system. Our airspeed indicator is acting like an altimeter at this point. In fact, again, you can see G1000 pilots, we're ready to candy cane over here. I'm sorry, glass panel pilots, we're ready to candy cane over here. We won't get any red X's until we get some just erroneous, uh, unreasonable readings with this. Let's say the whole system ices up, static port included. Interesting, everything just freezes exactly where it froze. You can see that what it should be showing, right? Here's our reference readings over here. You can see what it should be showing, but on a glass panel, it can't detect that this has happened. We're not getting those red X's like you would actually think. Now, what happens if I pull the alternate static source? Well, it'll catch back up, and it catches back up, and my airspeed indicator is still working like it would as an altimeter, essentially. Now, by the way, we probably have a red X over there, 
Oh, nope, not quite, just a little bit more. And then we'll eventually just get that airspeed fail warning here in probably just a second, maybe around 2.30. Not quite, it's gonna go a little, probably to the top of the candy cane, it's gonna go with that. So you can see we're getting these readings. The alternate sack source works, but vertical speed altimeter. Now something else to show you here, let's unclog everything. I want you to notice when we use, so everything's back to working as it should. When we use the alternate static, watch the altimeter here. Watch the vertical speed here. You see how we get this little jump? Why do we get this little jump here? It's the difference. It's the difference between the outside static pressure and your alternate static source is probably located inside your aircraft if I had to guess. So that's the difference in pressure that you're seeing. So you need to know and be mindful of that. What's the name of the game if something like this happens, if this ice is up, right? We need to get, uh, we need to get some pressure in there. We need, you've heard the, the old saying, hey, if this happens in a six pack, break the vertical speed indicator. They say, cause it's the cheapest instrument, but in reality, you need to get, you need to make an alternate static source in this case. If you have a G1000 or a glass panel, please don't follow that advice. Go, okay, Jason said, break my vertical speed indicator. It's, don't, don't do that. It won't, it won't work like you think it would work in that case. The name of the game though, is to get that static pressure in there. This is why we have backups on backups in everything that we do. This is why with your glass panels, we still have those standby instrumentations. It's required, I guarantee you have those in there as well. Backups on backups and from independent sources is always valuable as well. Hey, show of hands, who learned something here today? Let me know in the comments down below. Did you know the airspeed indicator can act like an altimeter in certain cases? What else did you learn? You know, at M0A, like I say, it's not just an amazing YouTube channel. It's a fantastic ground school, but in all actuality, it's just good real world application, good real world education. We help thousands of people pass their check rides and written tests, knowledge tests, literally every single year. But that's not the business we're in. We're in the business of making safer, smarter pilots. And it's my prayer before every single video, every single webinar is to save just one life. I hope that video did that today. The stat will never be able to track or truly know, but I hope in some way uh, m 0 way and this 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge has made an impact not only on your life, but certainly on your flying. Have a blessed, amazing, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you. Hey, listen, if you think these videos are amazing, and I hope you're loving the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge, but if you think the free videos we put out here on YouTube are amazing, wait until you see inside of our online ground school. M0A has you covered for private, instrument, commercial, and your fundamentals of instructing uh, exams, written tests, check rides, and making you that safe real world pilot. Take a two week free trial of it. No strings attached, no credit card needed at m0atrial.com. I look forward to seeing you in there, seeing you on the member only webinars, which we do each week and seeing you just excelling in 2022 in your aviation journey.